Hello and welcome to the Wigtown Book Festival. I'm Marjorie Lotfi. I'm the chair of the Board of Trustees, but I'm also the co-founder and director of Open Book. And I'm Claire Urquhart. I'm the other half of Open Book. All the poems that you'll hear tonight were written as part of our community project 2021 by groups from Orkney, Shetland, Aberdeen, Brora, Ullapool, down to Stranraer and Eyemouth and lots of places in between. The groups read poems and stories aloud and use them as a springboard for their own writing, sometimes writing on their own and sometimes writing as a group. And we're really proud and delighted to be here tonight to share some of their work from this year. We're going to be reading from our brand spanking new double pamphlet called If You Were Me. It's the third, the the third in a series, some of the others are here, we'll show you them in a minute, um, that we've been writing every week, every year together, and, and then choosing some of that work that's been written in these groups to publish in this way. So we're going to read through some of that work. You're going to hear some of the writers tonight. Claire and I will pop in with some of the poems because we want to read them too, um, and then share a little bit throughout the evening um, about how the, how the poems get made and so a little bit about what we do in those groups. But I think just we'll just get cracking so you can get a sense of what it is we do and, and the some of these poems, and then we'll stop and chat. How's that? Sounds good to me. Okay, I'm going to read the very first one, and it's actually the very first poem in this pamphlet. As I said, um, they're chosen, so it's not all the poems that have been written across all of our groups, but they're chosen and selected by Eddie Gibbons and Tapsel Terry Publishing, so we're really grateful not to have to do, make those yes. choices. But the very first poem that's in this pamphlet is written by our group in Aberdeen, which is an ESOL group. It was written for Book Week Scotland at last year as part of their future, but also nature theme. And this is the poem that the group came up with and wrote together. The leader in, of that group is Alison Bell. It's called, I Must Take the First Flight. And I think if any of you out there are grounded like I am a long way from home, hopefully you'll find it as moving as I did. I must take the first flight. I must take the first flight and go to the place to where? I must take the first flight to go home, to travel, make up for lost time, find out what might be out there. I must take the first flight and spend more time alone to dream a sudden awakening. Let's fly together, talk with the moon and even the stars. Let's take the first flight. I love that poem. I know. It makes me homesick. So I'm glad, I'm glad you got to hear it, but I'm glad it's over too. <laughs> Our next reader is um, Leila Soma. Hi. Um, I'm really pleased to be at Wigton Book Festival. And thank you to Open Book for this brand new, beautiful pamphlet um, and to listen to all the other contributions too. I'm Leela Soma, a writer from Glasgow. And I'm representing the Scottish BAM or BAME, whichever you'd like, uh, Writers Network. Um, my, I'm reading two poems. The first one is a really short one, an extract from mine called Life. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen the photograph of the little boy stranded on the coast um, of the refugees. And it just sparked something in me. So it's a very, very short extract. Life. Boats spiral out on the Mediterranean. Flee, flee for your safety. Seek freedom, a future. Pudi and while the world spins on its axis. Meanwhile, life goes on. The wild blue waves turn to white foam as it licks the shore. Maya, transience. You'll notice I use two words there that are Tamil, my language of birth, which Pudianada is new country, and Maya, which is illusion. The second poem I'm reading, I must say I'm, I'm thrilled to do it because it's after Edwin Morgan, um, Push the Boat Out. And it's a group poem, which means that there are lines from all the people in the group. So 
I'm really thrilled and happy to read it um, to you. Finding a puddle or a gutter. The rippled water might drop off the edge of the earth into a never ending fall of water, an arc of soil, of magma, a mushroom and grass carpet soiled soles of socket feet, socked feet sliding on search of silent souls. Doesn't the stillness of the shore make your bones ache? Push the boat out, companeras, to la libertad. Seek and ye shall find. Push the boat out, come what may, with grace and light. Push out, row out into the galaxy. Purple swirls with glitter. Lines of fate worn smooth from fingers, counting the surety of circular time and the Morse code of Norse gods. Surrender sideways to the tumbling allure of the froth encrusted waves. Push the boat out, don't hold back, be experimental, give it all you've got from the heart. The lady with the heart for a head, the woman whose head is her heart, the person who is a heart, pushing the boat out against stormy waters, not holding back, always giving with generous spirit, pushing like salt and pepper, pushing real good. Push the boat in, Campaneras. We have arrived. Thank you. Thank you, Leela. That was a lovely reading of that poem. I love the end, particularly. And the salt and pepper reference made me smile <laughs> as well. It's, it's the right era for me. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. And for your own beautiful poem. I think we're heading to Dundee next we are. in our whistle, tops, whistle Stop Tour of Scotland. And we have um, Rhoda, who's going to read um, for us two poems from the pamphlet. I think you're muted, Rhoda. <laughs> So sorry about that. Hello, I'm Rhoda Neville, and I'm here to uh, read uh, a couple of the poems um, that are in, in the pamphlet. One is by our group um, in Dundee, um, run by Raphael Torubia. Um, and uh, it is also a poem in honor of uh, Edwin Morgan, um, and it's called Knitting the Waves. Like distant ships in mist, or bells clanging out their siren calls, cowering fearful of what may be hidden there, but strengthened by the presence of others. The mermaid urges caution, don't go off the beaten track in case of danger. Look up and see the stars and sky, endless play action. Ties to home run through our hands as we cast off, knit the waves, tartan legs, Vanish in a spray of gulls, screeching, squawking, swooping, soaring. We watch, we wait to go. The second poem is, um, is, is one I wrote called Curly. When she pictures him, it is his de good denim shirt she sees, flat iron fresh, the cloth hanging from his angular frame a sail on a square rigged ship. She minds his work gnarled hands, tanned tobacco brown in Alaska summers, days on a Norton, clinging with fervor to frost heave roads, risking a jinking to extinction by buckles and bumps. Those hands wielding his sheep knife, flashing silver and sable, pale blonde curls of wood as they furl fragrant off the pegs he carves. Later, he daub on colors, adding features to form. Mule skinner, stevedore, leatherhead bush pilot, wildcatter, panner of gold, 
cookie in toque and grease smeared apron. He might have made a chest board's worth, working his memoir in wood, what he'd seen, who he'd known, had his heart not betrayed him first. Thank you. Those are beautiful, but I thank you so much for reading them. And I love the form of that second one, Curly. It's really, really interesting, but you'll have to buy the pamphlet <laughs> in order to be able to see that. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I didn't mention is that the names of all the writers for the group poems, for most of the groups, are in the pamphlet, but we're, we're not going to be reading them out individually. So I thought I, we'd stop there while we bring in some of our other writers and talk a little bit about what happens in these groups. What Claire didn't say is we have shared reading groups that run right across the country. So as she mentioned, we're from the, this, in the last month we've been in the islands off Shetland. We've each actually had groups in Fula and Fair Isle, um, right down to the South Stranraer, right across to Eyemouth and all the places in between. But many of our groups, two thirds of our groups are shared reading groups, which mean we get together and read aloud. So you don't have to do any homework. In fact, you don't have to do anything. You just turn up. We read a text together. At the moment, many of them are online. Um, and then we talk about them. And then what happens in the creative writing groups? And we, we tack those on much later, largely because I'm a, a writer with another hat on, um, is that we then use that discussion around those texts to write. So it's, it's really different than other creative writing groups that you might have been in or taken part in, even if they're mine. We, we take a text, we look at it, we pull it apart, we think about why the author might have written it that way. And then we use something about it to make our own writing. The group writing that you're hearing tonight is made slightly differently. Often people go off and do their own writing, but if you're not feeling like you want to do that, you're not confident enough to do it, or maybe English isn't your first language, or just for all kinds of reasons, don't feel like you want to make a piece of writing. If you come to a session where group writing is happening, the lead reader, some of whom you'll meet tonight, um, is the person to hold the pen, as it were. And they don't do any writing apart from gathering in all the ideas that are floating around the tables. And if someone might say, oh, that reminds me of something, that might make it into the work, or or that making connections to their own lives or to the outside world or whatever it is, those get wrapped into a piece of work that gets then read back to the, to the group and they can kind of mix with it or change it or reorder it. And those are the pieces that turn into group poems. So the pamphlet is full of both individual writing, but also we tried to get a piece of group writing from every group into the pamphlet so that you could hear the voices um, of everyone. And what's fun about it is some of the groups, including the one that Leela just read a poem from, from, often don't write as a group. They often write as individuals, so it feels uncomfortable for them to do the opposite, to write as a group. So we try and push everyone to do something slightly different. And if you've not written much before, like me, um, and you fancy giving it a go, mm. it's a lovely, gentle, guided way to have a go at writing. Um, and we welcome anyone. You're very welcome to join any of our creative writing groups. And you can find more about when they happen and where they happen on our website, which is openbookreading.com. I think we better move on to we our should. next group, yeah. um, which is, well, three different, three different areas again. I think our first reader is from Paisley, and that's Margaret, who I think is joining us already. Hi, Margaret. Hi. I've been reading um, two poems. One is a book poem and one is a piece of work from myself. The first one is the group poem in response to At 80 by Edwin Morgan, and it's called The Untouched Horizon. Unknown is best, unknown is new. Push out into the wide open sea, pushing the day until it breaks. Fight against the waves, jump into the wood and rickety frame. The sail unfurls, a Fibonacci spiral swells like a pregnant womb. Push forward to new places where we can be reborn. A soft, sweet spot to be reborn to start over, like the tang of fresh paint. Forward mariners and grab the untouched horizon. Second chance, second to none. 
The second poem is one by me, I am called White Noise, in response to Mary Oliver's poem, Wild Geese. We are our own worst enemy, our toughest critic, judge and jury, 4 a.m. fears. The sentence we give to ourselves is more than we deserve. We all trip and fall from grace, stumble into the woods, the darkened spaces untethered, there to be who we are. Must we share the cell of despair? While the soft morning glow seeps into the earth and gaze awakened, fresh and new, and guiltless clouds wander freely across the mountain tops, bursting with the juice of life itself. While the cool breeze whispers her secrets, passing from tree to tree, and crystal waves unfurl on the seashore, unshackled and finally free. The crush and hush of their landing, calling out to you and me. Listen, let them trickle into your dark corners and swallow your fears and loneliness, their power and gentleness all at once, pulling and releasing you back into the world. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. That's a great example of how to take someone's poem and make something new of it, all your own. So thanks for sharing that, Margaret. And now I get the pleasure of reading um, one of the individual pieces from the I Mouse group, um, Julianne Thomason's poem, Flight to Freedom. And unfortunately, Julianne can't be with us tonight uh, because she's not well, but um, I'm hoping I can do it justice. She wrote her poem in response to the theme, Flight. Um, across each month, all our groups uh, look, read and write to the same theme. And one of the themes this year was flight. And Julianne's poem talks about that. Different tastes, different sounds, diluted memories, shape-shifting changes, float into void mind, numbing the emptiness of an exiled heart. Swaddled by listlessness, a barren place, loneliness. Take the first step, the flight to freedom. I love that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Mm. It's amazing how some, some of the l little poems really pack a punch. So we're moving to Brora with our lead reader, Liz, who will pass the baton on to just now. Hello, hello everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here and I'm very excited to say that um, Brora Learning Zone, which is where our group is based, have two poems and a pamphlet and um, they're a very inspiring group of poets. So I'm going to read them both. The first one is called For a Moment Leave a Mark and it's inspired by um, the Edwin Morgan poem. Push the boat out, whatever the sea, Move forward through the waves, weft and warp, ebb and flow, eternal motion drifting like a piece of driftwood over a stormy rough wave. Floating clouds reflecting on still water, looking at the gentle ripples catching sunbeam. Life, like a seal surfacing on flat calm water, watching from a distance, leaving the safe harbour, sliding through cool satiny water, eyes fixed on the horizon, the dark undercurrents try to drag you down. Guide the tiller through crushing, crashing waves curling to shore. Let the cool water take your weight and sustain you. No matter how calm, how rough, how dark, for a moment, leave a mark that in time will disappear back into that flashing mirror and submerge you in blue. So that was the first poem. And uh, I just want to say how wonderful, how wonderfully I think the group manages to write group poems. <laughs> this is another cracker coming up and it's called, Who Are You Mother? 
your body, the vessel for life, never again will wear a bikini. Tots, teens and tantrums, pacifiers, potties and puberty. And sleep, the chance to sleep. 21 years later, you will still snap awake at the creak of a door. When they're young at heart and they fall and skin their knee, you can put a plaster over it. When they get older and things go wrong, you can't put a plaster over it. You just have to give them a cuddle and say everything will be all right. Your selfless mothering instincts disappear down the back of the couch with the broken biscuits. Now you're on the settee laughing with them occasionally while you watch the wearing of unsuitable fashions, tight frocks, short skirts, absurd flares. You're the one they wave to from the school bus, sometimes, giving them freedom to fly wherever, never saying I told you so, allowing dependence, but giving independence, mothering, not smothering. You will never matter to yourself as much again. You are lost, you are found, and you are here. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. I love those broken biscuits down the back of the couch. <laughs> I think there's a few of those in my house. Yeah, it feels like I should I should put this on my fridge to remind me. <laughs> you might have noticed quite a few of our readers tonight make reference to Push the Boat Out. Um, in March last year, um, with the support of the Edwin Morgan Trust, all our groups um, wrote to Edwin Morgan's poetry as part of his centenary celebration. And we asked our groups in particular to look at his poem, At 80, and to read it together um, and to create and craft some group poems uh, in response to it. And in particular, the idea that is in that poem that unknown is best and, and we should all be pushing the boat out. And I think it struck a chord with lots of our groups, particularly given the year that we've had when there haven't been a lot of pushing the boats out anywhere. We've all been stuck at home. But just thinking about um, how we can make the most of the things that we did have and, and what we missed. And a lot of the poems in the pamphlet, um, beautiful writing in response to At 80. Yeah, it was a real challenge to do that this year, but it's been it's been a real joy for us to to just to acknowledge the idea that unknown is what we're stuck with at the moment and and question whether that means that it's best or at least embrace it, I think. And hopefully you'll hear that come through some of these poems. The first poem in this next group that we've got is um, a poem that's written in Arabic, which we're delighted about. We're delighted to finally, as well as Scots, groups in Scots and groups in Gaelic, we're delighted to, to this year have added some groups that are happening in Arabic, not just looking at work translated into, into English from Arabic, but the whole session happens in Arabic. And I'm going to pass over to Safana, who's our lead reader in Arabic, to tell you a bit about this one and read it for us. Hi, Safana. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Claire. Thank you so much for Marjorie and Claire to organize this group. It's really like a good experience for me. And uh, I, I love working with Open Book. It's very uh, great organization. Uh, we have like, a, sorry, I have sore throat. Maybe my voice is not clear. Uh, we like I have uh, written a, a, a poem, uh, one, uh, and then I translate it to English. Uh, because I'm lead reader for like a uh, uh, Arabic uh, group, which is public. So I'm going to start to read them. Fi kulli makanin yanduruna ilayya wa yasalun an lugati, an watani, wa man akun. Aqisu al-masafat, ash'uru bil-ana min rihlati al-shaqa. يناديني البحر حاملا رسالة من مكان بعيد لكنني لا أستطيع الرد أو حتى أن أجيب رغم المسافات البعيدة لم ننسى اللحظات الجميلة أنا موجودة في كل مكان وفي كل بلد لي آثار فلا تسأل من أنا أنا في النهاية إنسان هربت لأعيش بسلام I'm now going to read in English. Everywhere I go, they look at me 
wondering about my language, my home, and who I am. I measure the distance. I feel exhausted from the miserable journey. The sea calls me, carrying letters from a faraway land, but I can't even reply. Despite the long distance, we still remember the joyful moments. I am everywhere, leaving footprints in every land. Don't ask me who I am. In the end, I am a human who escaped to live in, in a peace. Thank you. Thank you, Safana. It's such a moving poem, Safana, and it's beautiful for us to be able to hear it in Arabic. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's musical to our to our ears. Exactly. For, I don't yeah. speak, I don't have Arabic, but it's a musical thing to hear. So thank you for doing that for us. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So the next poems we've got are from our group in Perth, um, our Perth writers. And we're going to read a couple. I'm going to, I have the joy of reading those. We're going to, uh, our reader, Margaret, isn't here. So we're, I'm going to have the joy of getting to read those two poems. They're both group poems. And I happen to know that this group writes as a group regularly together um, rather than writing individually. So I think you'll get a sense of, they're quite a fun, um, if I say cheeky, I hope they won't be um, offended group. I, I started out writing with them in the beginning. So I feel I know a little bit about them. This first one um, is written in response to, we had a theme that was the celebration theme for book for Scottish Book Trust, Book Week Scotland last year. And because we'd done other kinds of celebration, we decided to do a celebration of the self and what that looked like. And this poem is the one that came. It's called The Journey. I want to fly to Japan or rest on a cruise or just somewhere near home, but far enough to hear my own voice and the waves of the sea. I want to take a drive, a mystery tour, further than the city limits. A long walk in the uncrowded woods, being able to hear the wildlife. My only companions, the characters in my book, my imagination, and a stray dog looking to share my sandwich. I want to go to the pub again, to be and not just exist to live life again. I think that's a poem we can all relate to from that yeah. moment in the middle of lockdown when we were not able to go to the pub or walk very far from home. So I think that that, that was written in April of yeah. this year, so right at the moment when we were all curtailed in our freedoms. It's, it's nice to have a record of that as well. And yeah. I think although we didn't write specifically for COVID or about COVID or about lockdown, inevitably you see that coming through in some of the poems yeah. in the pamphlet. And that whole idea that a journey, I think we all learned that this year, that a journey can be just going out for your front door and walking around the block or walking up the street, that we suddenly journeys became a different thing because you were only allowed to do them once a day. It was a really interesting thing for us to learn. Um, and then the second poem from the group that we'd love to share with you is, is also one for Edwin Morgan. So many of the ones that came into the book or the pamphlet came from that month where we responded to Edwin Morgan's work as part of a centenary. Um, and again, as I said, we didn't select the poems that went in, which is why we're so joyful when people are delighted that they got a poem in because we had nothing to do with it. So we feel we can really celebrate that. We should maybe admit the very first year we did try and select. <laughs> we thought we, we could do the job ourselves. Yeah. And what happened was that we couldn't unselect any poems no. so we decided quite quickly that we would need to get some professional help to select and, and that's when uh, Eddie Gibbons very kindly stepped in and helped us with that job yeah and it's a tough task because we could hear everybody's voices and we knew the groups themselves and what you know that as I said it earlier the cheekiness in that poem before we can hear the people writing it and it made it very hard to decide so thank you Eddie so this is their second group poem called at 80 Push the boat out, whatever you do. But be sensible. Think first of the consequences of your actions. Wisdom comes from being confident. Education is key. Take it. Use it. Go out into the world and share it. Love daily, but 
Make sure that love is earned and respected. Lust after love and happiness. Cherish it always. Love lots and love hard. Try new things with new people, but don't be afraid to leave the wrong people behind. Always be yourself. Do what you want and not what others expect of you. Live life the way you want. Be happy. Laugh. Have fun and make memories. Take time to reflect on your choices and accept things you cannot change. Put your bare feet into the morning dew. Soak it up and revitalize. Ground yourself. Sniff the sweetness of the earth. Watch the birds fly. Drift through days without purpose. Just be. I love that. I think that's a good instruction manual for life, <laughs> no. that one. Maybe that should be on my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> and then I think we're coming right down to this neck of the woods, one of our Dumfries and Galloway groups, which is taken by Catherine, who's here with us. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marjorie, Claire, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name's Catherine Coromillis, and I... I'm really honoured to be the leader down in the Stranra group and I'm reading a couple of poems today and the first one is a group poem and it's called Reach for the Tide. In the noonday heat, grains of shifting sand, scattered shells and samphire in a landscape of their own. Seagulls meandering in the wind reach for the tide. The sea rolls and swells. Pebbles are reshaped by breaking waves in a landscape of their own. Hunt, prey and fish for luck reach for the tide. A glimpse of distant ships. And the second poem uh, is a poem written by Diana Hamilton. And this is the first part of my life was. The first part of my life was a black fading moon on the water, lifeless, deserted by time, a silent celebration of the old, as usual, swift in its context, reflecting on the gravel, shouldered by creeping moss, poached, muted surroundings. The second part of my life is an open road, wide-eyed, and wondering, almost wistful, fine sands underfoot, leaving my mark, wandering feet, tread a new path, the unknown free, yet anxious, the colours awash, bright, surround me. That's us. I love that poem. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And it's a great way to try writing your life, actually. I've, I've seen it in a couple of other places since that on social media and other places, that idea of saying breaking your life into parts and just trying to describe them in, in stanzas. Beautiful. Yeah. I really Thank love you. Yeah. And thanks, Diana, who's watching right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well Thank done, you. you. <laughs> beautiful, really beautiful. And I love your group poem, too. I particularly love the glimpse of Lovely. The distant ships. It's beautiful at the end. That line stands off on its own. So formally, it feels like yeah. it's a little glimpse as well, which is wonderful. A little surprise at the end. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. So we're, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about some of our other arts-based groups. So it wasn't enough for us just to do reading groups and and then add in a bit of creative writing. We decided we'd, we'd do even more in the way that we, Claire and I, often do. It's what happens when you take good pals and let them loose in the world of running 
um, a literature organization. And what we thought we'd do is something that I often do in other, um, with other hats on, which is to write, including artwork, or use art as inspiration for, um, for some of the writing as well. So as well as looking at a text, we might take a theme that's happening in a gallery or, um, or somewhere else, an image, or something that you're going to see later with, with Claire reading, um, a photograph, for example, and look at the theme around it and then use some artwork that builds into that um, and use the, the whole thing together as one, in the same way that we've described, but you'll hear that um, at the end with the, the poem that Claire is going to read. And we should say as well that when we thought about this idea and um, we went out and asked our, uh, our newsletter subscribers where they would like the, the poems, uh, uh, sorry, the pictures and the artwork to come from. We got so many wonderful suggestions of small galleries and, and not so small galleries and rural artists. And it was almost like a, a, an artistic tour of the, the mm. country. Um, and our, our lead reader, Liz, who you met earlier, um, who works with the Brewer Group, runs those sessions for us. And I think she would say she's had a wonderful time meeting all the artists and, and uh, visiting their art galleries on Zoom uh, when she hasn't been able to go in person. Am I allowed to say that I think we'll be calling out to you all again? To, uh, we've got some more funding to run more of these sessions in the, in the coming months. And we'll be asking you again what, where you'd like us to be in terms of we're not physically going to those places, but where we can get bring some focus to an artist or a gallery. We try and generally keep them out of the central belt because we spend a lot of time on those galleries already. But the idea is to try and bring our focus to places like Uist, which you'll hear about in a, in a few minutes. Um, but we do also run a regular group, um, a monthly group at the Stills Gallery in Edinburgh. Um, so that's another place that you can find this sort of tackling one more thing, adding art into the mix. I think, though, before we head into uh, sharing that, that picture and the poem that goes with it, with you, um, we're going to ask Mina um, from our uh, Mary Hill group in Glasgow to share some of the group poems that her group has been writing over the course of this last year. Hi, Mina. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, Claire. Well, hello, I'm Aminacci Ciamponeri, and uh, I'm going to represent Mary Hill Integrations Network's uh, group poem, and which is run by our lovely Catherine. So first poem is, I slip on the gold silk sequins jacket. Makes me feel special in the pocket. A business card without a business. A traffic policewoman whistle dangles on a gold and a brown rope. I whistle for quiet time. Fill the hem of the dance outfit where Gujarati women in the desert embroider the warmth of peacock elephants. This kanga reaches around the waist, carries a baby, shopping, wraps the hair. The hem bears wise word of advice. The strip of these shorts warm pink, yellow, and soft white. Comfort me when I miss home. Here, my grandmother's sari, my connection with her. On of white and maroon silk, the paisley pattern of tea drops, a cypress tree, the pine, and the cone. Little things have big memories. These pattern ties, my father's ball, and his cigar case, which sits in the corner cabinet, smells of the past, calling cigars, elegance. I remember the feeling of my grandfather's skills, uh, craft, paisley pattern in my jacket of sequin. I drink cold water from a gold rim glass. And the second one is inspired by Maura Dolly. And the poem's title is Whatever Woman Should Carry. And that's a group poem as well. Always carry a gift from a small child. Alongside a flight of fancy sweets, mints, an extra bag for milk or bread. 
Take all the money you need. Take a small book of wise words. Take hand sanitizer to keep you safe and to help others. When traveling beyond the stars, bring hairspray to fix your hair and to fix those who misbehave. Take fear when you are leaving the house. Take distance, silence, sunscreen. Water is essential if you feel sad. Remember a photo of a child, a mirror that is a memory, sunglass, magazines, a geese in flight. Sometimes you have to wait for the right destination. And this is the third and last poem I'm reading. Uh, it's the title is The Boat and inspired by Edwin Morgan. Keep good watch always. See screeches sail on glassy horizons. People smuggles reefs. Be vigilant for those in a danger who needs your help. Be watchful for pirates and risks to life. There's a welcoming island lies at the end of a long journey over a dangerous sea. You don't know when the storm will come. To survive, grab a life jacket, pray for the sparkle of the sunshine on the sand. Shining stone, familiar land. Really at the sign, sign that makes you know you belong. Fishermen bringing their boats in different air. The color of the sand changes in, in each place. The sound of the sea breathing calming under the infinity sky. I dream about the sea nearly every night, sailing into that harbor in my newspaper boat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mia. I think in the wardrobe is just such a brilliant um, representation of a group poem and you can almost feel all the ideas that have been crafted together into one poem from the different people who were in the room at the time that that session was happening. Uh, can I stop and just explain a little bit about the Mary Hill group? Because I think it's yeah. worth saying that's a group that we've worked with for years and it's a group that meets every Wednesday at the Mary Hill Integration Network. I think it's called the Oasis Women's Group. Nina's a big part of that group. And, um, and it's often, it, back in the day, before COVID, it was often really genuinely 25 or 30 women around the longest table you've ever seen. Um, Safana, who we, we met there, was one of them as well. And um, they come from everywhere really they genuinely almost always have someone from every continent there are dozens of languages around the table um, and there are people it's a it's mayhem and a joy all at once and there are often people speaking and if you're trying to lead that session you have to speak really loudly which is not my comfort zone <laughs> um, nor Catherine's but we're working on it and if, you know and then there are people translating around the table for for a friend or for someone else who might not be able to catch every word so it's a really raucous noisy joyful group of women who are helping each other out and helping each other to settle and to make friends it's really about making connections and friends so we're there once a month writing with them. But you can see in the three poems that Mina read what, what quite often happens, which is, you know, the first one in the wardrobe is a real mix of saris and sequins and paisley and memories from all over the place and all the sorts of things you might find in these women's wardrobes. And then what every woman should carry is, is a wonderful kind of admonition of kind of bring your hand sanitizer. I noticed both Claire and I chuckled at that <laughs> about keeping people safe, but also bringing fear and bringing distance and bringing memory all within this enormous handbag. And then when we ask groups like that to write, to push the boat out, what it means at a place like Mary Hill, and in that poem, it's about m memories of perilous journeys often to get here that idea of you know the boats that people travel on being as flimsy as a newspaper boat um and dreaming of those journeys still to you know what it might mean to someone who's landlocked in perth or paisley it's a huge difference but they, this group one group i think really is a great example of what we do right across our groups from scots women new scots to people who've lived here all their lives from people 
writing and thinking in all sorts of languages. But I think they do a really terrific job of representing what we do right across the board. So I'm hoping that you got that from the three poems. And you should also mention that whenever you're running a group there, you always get the most wonderful lunch. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody brings and makes some food to share, and they truly do break bread together. Yeah, you're not allowed table. to leave so without yeah. cake and tea and hummus and you know all yeah. sorts of varieties of things, which is a really, which is a real wonder. But mostly, it's noisy. My memory of it is that it's noisy and fun, and you cannot be a shy poet in that room, or you will get nothing done. So, and that's really, that's really joyful too. I think that's largely brought us to the end of tonight's session. We've got one more treat for you. But before that, we want to remind you that this brand new thing that's straight out of the box is available to buy both on our website, the openbookreading.com website, but also in the shop here in Wigtown. Um, so we'd be delighted to um, have any of you have it in your homes. Um, and all of the work, all the money that comes from that goes to, to further our work um, right across Scotland with the groups that you've heard from tonight. Um, but, and I think that's all, except to say that we often end a session because we end up having such good chats um, by, by reading ourselves out of the room, as it were, as a w nice way of concluding. So Claire and I thought that might be a good thing to do tonight. So Claire's going to take up with the last poem and she's going to tell you a little bit about how it got written and why it got written. And sh I'll, I'll stop talking and let her have the final word, except to say th huge thanks to all the faces on the screen, which we keep looking left because they're on our left, <laughs> but we know you're out there this way. So huge thanks to everyone who was brave enough to come and read with us tonight and to all of you listening and to the supporters of our work and to the Wigtown Book Festival for including us in their program. So our final poem um, was written by Sheila Breyer in our words and images group that's one of our groups that writes to art that marjorie was talking about earlier um, and it was written uh, in relation to meg rogers exhibition on newest now meg um, is an artist she is a crofter she keeps sheep and she uh, had an, a residency in iceland as part of her artistic uh, side of, of what she does day to day um, where she took one of the fleeces from her own flock and wove it into a cape. And that cape was to represent Odor, who was a woman in Norse mythology. Her saga has been told for over a thousand years. She was brave and strong, and she rescued her family from persecution um, and moved them to the Outer Hebrides, where they lived safely. Um, her exhibition is of giving women of different ages from different parts of the islands the opportunity to wear Odder's cape um, and to take photographs of them wearing it. Um, and some wonderful images came from that project. Our group looked at those images in one of their sessions and this is a poem that Sheila Breyer wrote that came from having seen those images. And Meg has very kindly given us permission to show her image to you this evening uh, while we're listening to the poem. So thank you, Meg, for that. Odder's Cape for the Crofters of Barony. With almost a mother's touch, she wraps it round my shoulders, then steps away, the tale passed on of hardship with song. It is woven lives, their warp and weft, wool warm and pungent, a rumour of sky. It is ice with fire, foam fleck, flint, wind scorched dune, the midnight keyhole in a sheep's eye. It is choosing what to see, lights, face, spell. It is voyaging, childlike, the strange becoming. Watch me now, taller than before, made for horizons, clad, I can see for miles. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks for thanks joining us. Thanks to our readers and thanks to the Wigtown Book Festival. Read the rest of them here and come and join us in one of our groups. Good night. Good night.